Are you guys ready for me to show you all the variants and stuff I have in my ridiculous Ghostbusters movie collection? I sure hope so! We're back! Alright, so before we go into all the variants I have, there are a couple more formats to address. Ghostbusters was actually the first movie ever released on a USB flash drive. And these must have sold incredibly poorly as I can't seem to find any of them on the secondhand market. And there were two different versions of Ghostbusters released on USB flash drive, one coming on a 2GB stick and one coming on a 4GB stick. The 2 gigabyte stick was the first one put out by PNY, and the only picture of it seems to be a mock-up. The 4 gigabyte one by Integral was at least sold on Amazon UK at some point. And if the mock-up of the PNY one is correct, the flash drive wasn't special at all. I mean, at least the Integral one said Ghostbusters on it. Now, while I don't have either of the flash drives, I do have a very similar format that Ghostbusters got released on, Mini SD. But this one came with the bonus of also having Youth and Revolt on it. I mean, what a perfect combination, Ghostbusters and that movie that I've never seen. Couldn't have been Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, that'd make too much sense. Now I package it with this. I'm sure this is something every Ghostbuster fan wants to watch with Ghostbusters, whatever. So this mini SD card is two gigabytes and has two movies on it, yet it also advertises the fact that there's extra space for music videos and photos. So I'm quite willing to bet that the movies on here aren't in the highest of quality. The main reason they apparently did these micro SD releases of movies was so you could play them on your Blackberry. And apparently there is no real way to stop you from accidentally deleting them, so they had to put a warning on here, don't delete your movies. And I, I know I already said it, but I still really don't get this combination of some R comedy packaged with Ghostbusters. Sony was distributing them both, so I guess they just figured this was a good way to get people to watch that Youth in Revolt movie? I don't know. And here's a close-up of the micro SD card itself. Much like the first version of the flash drive, there's nothing really special about it. it just looks like a regular micro SD card. Releasing movies on micro SD and flash drives must have proved incredibly unpopular, as so far the only other movie I've been able to find on these things is Terminator 3 on a flash drive and Terminator 3 with Terminator Salvation on micro SD. At least it got combined with another Terminator movie. So yeah, there you go, this weird thing happened. A Ghostbusters release with AT&T in the corner. Ghostbusters video cassettes, I've got a few, probably way too many, but whatever. So this is a variant you can find in the Ghostbusters 1 and 2 Red Border VHSs. But there's a rental sticker kind of covering it up on the front of my second Ghostbusters 2 VHS. So I'll point it out with the beta here. This one's got the RCA Columbia Home Video logo here, and this one just has black space. And this was because of the sale of Columbia to Sony in late 89 that I mentioned in the format video, so later releases of the Red Border ones were branded Columbia TriStar instead of RCA Columbia. Now, the label should probably be changed as well, but both of mine still say RCA Columbia on them. Also, rewind this tape, please. Well, that's what this tape gets for not having the rewind sticker on it. This also kind of nicely shows off how you could find different types of VHSs for the same movie back when. Wait a second, one of these is Ghostbusters 2 and the other is West Coast Video! West Coast Video was all about the branding. While the rental place this other Ghostbusters 2 video came from, put a video camera sticker on there. Thanks, I'm sure that was really helpful. All right, now let's talk about our first regional variant with the France VHS of Ghostbusters, or SOS Phantoms. 
Though it'd be more accurately said SOS Phantom because they don't usually say the S on the end. Like a lot of the overseas releases, this flips the Ghostbusters logo horizontally because of that whole we need the no symbol to be the right way thing. But at least they're still coming to save the world. All for all say. Now the France VHS is in that video format that most people forget about existing, C-Cam. Is it NTSC? Is it PAL? No, it's stupid C-Cam! To my understanding of it, C-Cam is just kind of a weird version of PAL, and France DVDs are just in the PAL format. Who are you gonna call? SOS Phantom! Unfortunately, there's no actual SOS Phantom version of the song that I know of. This is a pretty nice clamshell case for the movie, and it's got the three companies associated with it on the inside of the cover. Galmont, Columbia, and RCA Video. And here's a close-up of the nice and weird Seacamp VHS itself. No proper end label, but it does have a nice little hologram RCA Columbia sticker in the middle. Now here's another one of my more bizarre releases of Ghostbusters, which is another French VHS, but this is supposed to help you learn English with the voice of the movies, or something like that. This was put out by the company Cinevoice. The back of this one not only tells us about the movie, but also tells us about the amazing Cinevoice system, which is kind of just a subtitled version of a movie. This is an easy one to learn English with, I guess? I mean, if you're gonna learn English with a movie, it might as well be Ghostbusters. C-Cam! So, this one's a giant clamshell, as it's got to have your VHS and your book. Whoever tried to learn English with this tape last apparently gave up about halfway through. I do like the gold on here and the really messy Cinevoice logo. So here's the booklet containing the gross plan of the Ghostbusters. Oh, Dr. Peter Venkman is Pete and Raymond Stance is Ray. I never got that before. This book gives us an introduction so that we're not just thrown into the crazy world of the Ghostbusters. Though it would have been pretty crazy if it was Dan Aykroyd's original idea where we're set in the future and stuff. They give us a few biographies. Sigourney Weaver's got the biggest one here. Kind of funny, they give us a few maps of the area Ghostbusters takes place in with a nice little indicator of where the Ghostbusters office is. Then we get a little bit of an English to French dictionary for some phrases and words. And that actually makes up the majority of the book. They don't like have a English or French version of the entire script in here or anything. I kind of doubt this would be the easiest way to learn another language, but that certainly is interesting. Next up, I've got the Japanese version of the VHS, which features the theatrical poster with the flipped logo in behind them. I always just kind of like seeing different versions of the Ghostbusters title with the Ghostbusters logo in foreign text like this. The back of this VHS is very gray, and it also has that same little RCA Columbia hologram sticker which was on the end of the French VHS. The pictures on the back of the VHS are arranged pretty much exactly the same way as they were on the VHD. And the front of it looks pretty much exactly the same, just the VHS is the smaller, slightly more convenient version. The opening mechanism on this plastic case is kind of different than most VHS ones. The top label on this one is apparently just a generic RCA Columbia one, but the front label actually has Ghostbusters and stuff on it. Though it's upside down to how we'd normally have front labels here. Next, I have Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 in Hebrew! Because why wouldn't I want that, right? This is the only version I've seen with this white with red outline version of the Ghostbusters logo on it. They have it again here on the end label. And it's kind of funny that they have the English version of the poster on the end label as well. The VHS tape is on the opposite side of this clamshell than you'd expect. I don't know if that's typical for VHSs in Israel, but that's how this one came to me anyway. And I absolutely love this VHS tape as it's all yellow. This even has some 
label on the flap here. So in addition to having you know, Columbia Pictures on it, this all says King Video and uh, this. This might look kind of familiar to some of you. Yes, in Israel, Ghostbusters was apparently distributed by Canon Films. That's quite odd. It's also kind of odd that it has 1983 on it, considering Ghostbusters came out in 1984. Who are you gonna call? Cannon Busters! Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't point this out. The end label on our yellow VHS tape says, Oh no, Beta, for some reason. I don't know why the gold top label is bigger than the area it's supposed to go in. Nice one, Cannon. Now, I'm sure the main reason why the Hebrew VHSs of Ghostbusters were distributed by Canon were, well, the fact that Golan and Globus, who owned Canon at the time, were both from Israel. So, my Hebrew Ghostbusters 2 VHS is still in some really ratty-looking covering, but I really want to know what this tape looks like, so I'm gonna ruin it! Get mad! Well, looks like the tape should be on this side. This was one probably just got flipped the wrong way at some point. But, oh man, I am so glad I opened this now. Look at that. That is one of the greatest top labels I've ever seen. And um, one of the most not interesting front labels, whatever. Oh look, hanging out in the corner though, it's that RCA Columbia hologram sticker. Funny all the different spots this shows up. So once again, we got the King video and the slightly different looking Canon logo. It's not yellow like the first movie, but I think this makes up for it. I love that worried version of the logo ghost. I don't think I've ever seen that expression on it before. And this is something that was like stamped onto the VHS tape. It's not a sticker or anything. Once again, we got some printing on the flap of the VHS, and this is kind of odd that it's got like a rental looking sticker on it, which is even peeled up in the corner there, even though this tape was apparently never opened before, unless it was just resealed at some point. But whatever, that plastic covering was all ratty, so I don't feel that bad about ripping it off. And just like on the Hebrew version of Ghostbusters 1, we got a slightly different version of the Ghostbusters 2 logo on here. And Vigo's hanging out on the end label instead of it just having an English version of the poster on there. Now here's my UK double feature VHS of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. Or apparently called BOTH BUSTERS! If you want to be kind of weird. This tape contains two full-length feature films guaranteed to raise your spirits. But this tape does not contain this deleted scene with Eugene Levy, which is a cut scene from Ghostbusters 2, so I don't know why it's up with the Ghostbusters 1 pictures. This double feature VHS was put out by Cinema Club, who filled the lining of the VHS with adverts for other movies. Oh, that's nice and tacky looking. Also, Cinema Club apparently forgot what the movie is actually rated when it came time to print the top label here. Unless you just need parental guidance to look at the cover of these movies and then you have to be over 18 to actually watch them. So this is the second time we've seen Ghostbusters rating change from the cover versus the tape, though 18 is the highest I've seen it get rated yet. Now before we leave VHS land, here's the clamshell versions of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2 that came out in English. This was during Columbia TriStar's Let's Make Some Releases that kind of look like Disney's period, I guess. I actually didn't know Ghostbusters had releases like this until I found this copy of Ghostbusters 2 at a Goodwill. So these golden clamshells were part of the Columbia TriStar Family Collection. These releases of the Ghostbusters movies came out in 1996, but they didn't update their top label for Ghostbusters 2, so it still says 1989 layout and design. So this is what the not RCA Columbia version of the label should have looked like. They changed it up with Ghostbusters 1 though by making it a printed on top label, which I guess they designed the year before this got released. 
All right, now into Laserdisc, and I've already gone over the difference between CLVs and CAVs in the format video. But one thing I want to point out about the Special Edition CAV is these ones all had an individual number on them to play up to the collector's market. This Ghostbusters Laserdisc also has the CX noise reduction system on it, which is something that failed pretty bad on records, but lasted on Laserdisc for a little. Now I actually have two different versions of the kind of normal edition of Ghostbusters on Laserdisc. I didn't mean to get two of these. I got sent accidentally another one of them when I was trying to get a Laserdisc of two though. They are at least slightly different though, which gives me something to talk about. This one is the Letterbox Edition, which is faux widescreen, which adds black bars on the top and bottom. So my non-letterboxed edition is from 1985, but the letterbox edition is from 1989. The next difference here, I think, was just a mistake. On the 85 version, we have the Laser Vision logo in the corner, but on the 89 one, it's missing, despite there being text still talking about the Laser Vision mark. Oh, and in addition to being Letterbox, the 89 edition apparently featured digital sound. And the 85 one apparently didn't. The back covers are pretty much exactly the same, though the 89 one has a barcode, and the W is red instead of white. <gasps> By the way, I gotta mention that I love that the laser discs have this little cast list here that goes as far as naming male and female student. Though I do feel like I need to point out that Jennifer Runyon's character actually did have a name other than female student because Peter Venkman called her Jennifer. That could have just been Bill Murray calling her by her actual name, but she still had a name technically. Now on the actual laser discs themselves, they changed the label from a black one to a white one. Here's my first Ghostbusters 2 laser disc that was actually Ghostbusters 2. It came in the mail broken. So here's my non-broken one, still sealed. That's kind of cool. I didn't need it to still be sealed, but it is. There's no real difference with these two besides my sealed one having a punch through it, which was done before it was sealed. Also, I have a Japanese version of Ghostbusters 2 on Laserdisc, and I guess this one was sold by Blockbuster. While the front cover is almost the same, the back is pretty different. And something kind of nice about the Japanese laser discs is they actually label CLV or CAV. And here's what the Japanese Ghostbusters 2 laser disc looks like with Harold Ramis popping through the hole. Now here's the first laser disc I actually ever owned, which is the Criterion Collection of Ghostbusters. Yes, Ghostbusters actually had a release in the Criterion Collection. It's kind of a simple cover, but I rather like it, especially as it has all four Ghostbusters on it. This is one of, if not the only release that also uses the slightly different Ghostbusters logo. This slightly different logo is the one that's used on the title card of the movie. And yes, I notice a name little differences like that. So the Criterion release of Ghostbusters on Laserdisc was put out in 1989. And instead of the usual blurb about the story on the back, this one's talking more about the making of the movie. So this is the more bare bones release of the movie by Criterion, as for special features it only has the trailer and teaser on it. The red label Criterion Collection Laserdisc is the one that has all the special features on it, and I don't have that, but I have the Japanese version of it, I guess? This one looks almost exactly the same as the red label Criterion one, but instead it says Special Collection. The branding on this one is by RCA Columbia instead of Criterion. Also, you might notice on the back, flipped logo. And on the front, regular, but slightly different logo. This is a two-disc set, and it opens up like the Criterion version. But the inside is completely different than the Criterion one, and the Japanese one, I'm afraid, just blew itself. These laser discs look pretty much the same as the other RCA Columbia ones, just with Japanese text on them. The actual labels on the Criterion laser discs, of course, looked a little different and had the Criterion branding. 
This set also comes with a very blue book, which features a giant version of the slightly different logo. And then, um, I don't know, a very red version telling us something about Ghostbusters. And on the back, a giant list of credits. All right, now let's look at all the different versions of CED that came out. There was one that had a blue border instead of white. All right, moving on. Here's the three variants I have of the 1999 Ghostbusters DVD cover with the France one and the Polish one. The design on the back of the English and Polish one are pretty similar. Though the back of the SOS Phantom one is completely different and shows the theatrical poster. The actual DVDs on these three releases all look completely different. With the French one being the blandest, I mean, they didn't even bother to put the No Ghost and the No logo on Ghostbusters there. And the Polish one probably looks the best out of the three and is the only one that has a clear cover. And also it wants you to recycle it. At one point I did try to get an SOS Phantom version of the 99 release of Ghostbusters 2, even though I don't care for this cover that much. But instead I ended up with a singles version of the 2005 release. Here's the UK DVDs of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. And as you can see, instead of using any of the newer designed covers, they instead went with the more classic look for the two movies. Though the back covers are almost the same as the two 99 North American releases. Though Ghostbusters 2 did leave off this quote of hilarious box office. Also, this is kind of an odd picture on the back of the Ghostbusters 2 DVD, isn't it? Like with cops either about to raid a building or they're going to take on the Statue of Liberty. The actual UK DVD of Ghostbusters 1 is about as exciting as the French one was, but it does at least translate Ghostbusters to Ghostbusters for us, and also Die Geister Jagger, and I know I'm sure I didn't say it right. That is FACT! UK Ghostbusters 2 isn't all that exciting either, but it does at least have a proper looking label on it instead of that black on the plain CD thing. And here's the DVD for Los Casa Phantasmas, which makes a big point of letting us know that it includes the trailer. You know, that's really exciting there, guys. The backside is again pretty much the same as the 99 release. And now we have the DVD of Act. Gia Papa Fantasmi? I know I'm not saying that right. I found this version of the Italian DVD kind of interesting as it's the only DVD I've seen that uses the same cover as the Ultra 4K Blu-ray. But again, the back is similar to the 99 DVD. And it's the lazy black on nothing printing for the label where it also says Casa Fantasmas and Os Caca Fantasmas. And now we have the Australian DVDs for Ghostbusters 1 and 2, and I really rather like how these ones look. This is the only time I've seen this particular cover for Ghostbusters. Which at first kind of looks like it's excluding Winston, but nah, he's hanging out in the back there. And they didn't bother to copy the 99 DVD for how it looks on the back. Even their version of the classic Ghostbusters 2 cover is kind of different. I mean, besides the obvious with the green background. One kind of weird thing about it is, if you look really close at the No Ghost, he's got beveling around his edges, so it kind of makes him look really tired. But besides the beveling thing, the picture also looks a lot clearer if you compare it to the UK DVD. And this uses that picture of the four Ghostbusters from the insert on the 90 release of Ghostbusters 2 instead of that weird police situation thing. And as these are clear cases, they also have printing on the back side of the label, which makes inside the case look pretty nice too. That's kind of funny on their Ghostbusters 2 one. If you take the Scolari Brothers DVD away, you've got the Scolari Brothers in behind them! All right, now we're moving on to, I'm pretty amazed I managed to get them, Russian DVDs of Ghostbusters 1 and 2. And I, uh, yeah, this is the only time I can think of that the Ghostbusters 2 logo got used on Ghostbusters 1. This is also the only cover I have that has the original theatrical 
theatrical poster without the logo in behind them. The actual DVD looks pretty good, though again, Ghostbusters 2 logo on Ghostbusters 1, but I kind of love this release for that. And the back shows us that picture that's used on the Criterion Laser Disc of the Ghostbusters facing off against Gozer. The Ghostbusters 2 DVD has the Ghostbusters 2 logo as the main thing on the label, because I guess Russia loves the Ghostbusters 2 logo. And the back has that picture of the four Ghostbusters shooting their protons. These Russian DVDs are the first ones to really change up how the menus look, too, because instead of on Ghostbusters 1 having that animated menu with Stay Puft walking in behind New York, this one just has a static picture, much like the Ghostbusters 2 DVDs have been up to this point. Next we have this, which should maybe be on my orange backdrop because I'm not really sure about the legitimacy of this one. This is the only cover I've ever seen to put a kind of generic ghost in behind the Ghostbusters. So this Ghostbusters 1 and 2 Russian DVD is just a flip disc. Then we've got some rather questionable things on the back here. Like this really poor looking version of the flipped Ghostbusters logo, which is right below the regular version of it. This DVD still has like Columbia pictures on it and stuff, but then it's got a contact email, which is at yahoo.co.uk, so I don't know about that. Now we're on to the 2005 box set release of Ghostbusters 1 and 2, which I have the SOS Phantom version as well. And there's a couple differences with how the covers are on these two releases. As you can see, the Ghostbusters logo is kind of beveled out on this one. But it's actually completely flat on the French version. Also, you can see how this shines is more rainbowy than the English release of this box set. The backs of these box sets are different, and the French one includes that silly edit of a Ghostbusters 1 picture for that Ghostbusters 2 DVD cover. Maybe they're trying to cover that up a bit, though, since they kind of slimed over it on Bill Murray. So in the North American release of this box set, the two movies came in two thin DVD cases, and it came with a little booklet. I like how the SOS Phantom version did it a bit better, since instead of being two thin DVD cases, it's a nice little thing that opens up like this. I'm not going to go over everything in the booklet, but it is pretty nice and shows you some stuff like early storyboards where they envisioned Eddie Murphy playing Winston. And some different versions of the Ghostbusters logo before they came up with the final, some pretty Casper looking. And this is the Australian version of this box set, which is pretty different. This one has a metallic case, and it's another release that doesn't seem to know whether the Ghostbusters logo can be flipped the normal way or it has to be flipped the no symbol correct way. And that's not even consistent from the metallic outer cover to the actual DVD cover. I do rather like this one's cover as well, though, with the slime on the white background. That's quite different. Also, it's the spooktacular saga. You got the two DVDs put in one case like this, and they both look pretty nice. But no book with this one. I guess a book and a metal case would have been too much. All right, and we're finally out of DVD land and moving on to the Blu-ray territory. Next, we have Russian Blu-rays of Ghost. Ghostbusters 1 and 2, which are absolutely bootleg. One of the easiest ways to tell that these aren't legit is, well, look at the text clarity. That is awful. Also, this is missing some of the logos that should be on a legit Russian Blu-ray. One of which being this distributor logo, which is on my Russian DVDs. And yeah, here's the actual Blu-ray disc, and this is obviously not a professionally printed on label. This movie will be in high definition, unlike this cover. And just look at this pixelated crap of a picture on the one for Ghostbusters 2. And yeah, that's perfect, guys. Just have the whole of the Blu-ray go through Egon's head. I guess this is from an alternate universe where Peter didn't stop him from drilling that hole in his head. 
And yeah, as far as I know, no Ghostbusters 2 Blu-ray actually just uses the standard Ghostbusters 2 poster like this, which is really, really dark and a bit blued up compared to how it normally is. Like, you can barely see any of the light going past the logo on this one. Next, we have this set of Ghostbusters 1 and 2, which features a modified No Ghost, which is holding up 1 and 2. This one opens up and has that kind of annoying design where the DVDs or Blu-rays in this case overlap each other. This one also has a booklet, though this time it's just part of the actual case. And also, despite me getting this in the US, it's got the flipped logo for some reason on the Blu-ray. Next, we got Ghostbusters 3, aka the video game. And yeah, I got this on both Xbox 360 and PS3. But this release of the PS3 edition actually comes with the movie on Blu-ray. The PS3 edition that came with the movie on Blu-ray featured a blue background instead of the usual green one. Then of course there's the 4K Ultra HD Blu-rays of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. Now here is the Japanese Blu-ray set of Ghostbusters 1 and 2 and 5 episodes of the real Ghostbusters. This is also one of the few times that real Ghostbusters have been actually combined with the movies for a release. I mean besides those two episodes that were included on the Ghostbusters 2 DVD as special features. The top of the box for this set has a little pixelated version of the No Ghost, which is actually the design they put on the shirt that was included with this. Yeah, not only do you get Ghostbusters and real Ghostbusters, but you also get a shirt. So the outer cover for this Blu-ray set has that version of the No Ghost holding up the 1 and 2, but it's also got the four Ghostbusters in silhouette shooting their proton streams, which looks pretty cool. And on the back side, we got that really early artwork of the real Ghostbusters and that often reused Stay Puft. Egon's even holding that really bizarre proto version of the PKE meter on this. And here's the cover that's on the actual Red Ray? What? They're just having a good laugh at HD DVD at this point, aren't they? Anyway, this is kind of a cool cover as I think it's the first one to feature, you know, the movie Ghostbusters with the real Ghostbusters on it. So this just flips out to give you your Ghostbusters 2 Blu-ray and your real Ghostbusters Blu-ray with five episodes. And my last Blu-ray variants are the Steelbook editions of Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2. These are the German releases of them, but they're pretty much exactly the same as the English ones, just with a little flap tape to them. Also, the disc says Die Geister Jagger. And these are just really nice looking releases of these movies. These are just such different covers for Ghostbusters and the artwork on these two is absolutely awesome. This is probably the only cover that excludes Bankman instead of Winston since he wasn't there for this part. Again, no ranking system for this video because that doesn't really work with my movie collection videos. So I hope you enjoyed my look at all my ridiculous releases of Ghostbusters. And if not, I don't know why you watched this long. Seriously, this label kind of makes it look like Ghostbusters came out in the 50s and that the no ghost is a character in the movie, doesn't it?